Quick disclaimer, this video isn't about the Vikings, you're thinking of the Norsemen. It's not about the chaos-worshipping raiders from Warhammer, you're thinking of the Norskans. And it's not about the Northmen from A Song of Ice and Fire, also known as the First Men. No, this video is about the Northmen from Middle-earth, one of the few races of men that did not succumb to evil and instead fought against the forces of darkness. If you've been watching my War in Middle-earth series, then you're definitely aware of who the Northmen are. They were Gondor's main ally in the Third Age, aiding them in numerous wars against numerous enemies until their defeats at the hands of the Wayne Riders. But the history of the Northmen started before Gondor, and it lasted beyond the Wayne Riders. This is the full history of the Northmen. The history of the Northmen begins shortly after the awakening of men, when the sun and moon first rose above Arda. If you've watched my earlier video on why most men became evil, appearing on screen now, then you'll know that Morgoth corrupted all or at least most men after their awakening. Sometime early in the First Age, men have their first split. Those who stay in the east of Middle-earth worshipping Morgoth, and those who flee west, the Atanatari, the Adain. Now like migration waves that happened on our own world, the Adain didn't consist of one giant group of men marching west. Instead, some went ahead, such as the Beorians, some lingered behind, such as the Hadorians, and some followed an entirely different path, such as the Haladin. And like in our own world, these migration waves often stopped, and lingered in places for years or even decades before moving on. For example, the greater and lesser folk, the Hadorians and Beorians respectively, dwelt for a while by the shores of the Sea of Rune. This is where the Northmen begin as separate people. Many of the Adine continue to move westwards, passing either through or around Greenwood the Great, crossing the Misty Mountains and eventually the Blue Mountains, although it must be mentioned that only a minority of them ever actually crossed into Beleriand. Many of them remained behind, claiming the empty lands of either Ariador or Ravanian. Specifically, it's the men who remain in Ravanian, mostly Hadorians, who would end up becoming the Northmen. These men end up dwelling all across Ravanian, in Greenwood the Great, in the Vales of Anduin, in the open plains between Greenwood and the Sea of Rune, and in the valleys beneath the Grey Mountains. They end up growing numerous, especially in the more northern lands. The First Age is a time of relative peace and prosperity for the Northmen, especially whilst the Siege of Angband is underway in Beleriand. They end up closely allying with the Longbeards, who control all of the mountains between the Misty Mountains and the Iron Hills. This alliance is mutually beneficial. Men supply agricultural goods, whereas dwarves teach men their own crafts such as metalwork, and help them construct roads and other infrastructure. It must also be said that this alliance developed slowly. Dwarves are naturally distrustful of outsiders, and the Northmen had encountered evil dwarves in the east. It took many years for the dwarves to bother learning the language of the Northmen, and although few men ever learned the language of the dwarves, it did end up influencing their language. This alliance ends up being extremely beneficial during the beginning of the Second Age. With the defeat of Morgoth, many orcs and other evil creatures flee east, coming into conflict with both the Longbeards and the Northmen. The Longbeards, although exceptional warriors, are comparatively few in number compared to the orcs, and thus they are grateful for the presence of men, who are far more numerous. Likewise, the Northmen are grateful for the presence of the Longbeards, as their own defences are made of wood, their chief weapons are bows, and they are scattered and decentralised. Together, they are able to adequately defend their lands against these threats, and the first half of the Second Age is prosperous indeed. However, this all comes crashing down, and in a really big way. Following the War of the Elves and Sauron, Sauron turns his attention to dominating the interior of Middle-earth. Due to the active involvement of the Longbeards in the war, Sauron turns his attention on them, commanding his servants to invade the mountains of northern Middle-earth. At some point, Gundabad is taken and the Grey Mountains are infested with Orcs. As a result, the Longbeards become isolationists, leaving the Northmen to fend for themselves. This was the beginning of the Dark Years of the Second Age for men. As I mentioned earlier, the Northmen, although numerous, were also scattered and decentralised. They lived in villages or small towns and had no powerful kingdoms of their own. When the Orcs attacked, without the help of the Longbeards, these individual villages were left to fend for themselves. And it wasn't just Orcs that the Northmen were also contending with. Pressing his dominance eastward, Sauron urged the wild and warlike tribes of wicked men to the east to migrate westward. These men were ancient rivals with the Northmen, and they inevitably came into conflict with them too. I'll let this passage from Of Dwarves and Men from the peoples of Middle-earth explain the rest for me. When the storm passed, the men of the Old Alliance were diminished and scattered, and those that lingered on in their old regions were impoverished and lived mostly in caves or in the borders of the forest. 
I just want to make something clear here. The language used in this sentence is rather light and not exactly heavy on details. The Northmen had been living in these lands for almost 2,000 years when Sauron pretty much destroyed them, and they were reduced to living in caves or in forests. This was essentially genocide by Sauron. It kind of destroys the Sauron did nothing wrong argument. And this part of Middle Earth history isn't really well known for the most part. For most middlemen, the second half of the Second Age was truly an apocalyptic time, trapped between Sauron and his dominions and the increasingly tyrannical Numenor. This likely continued until the downfall of Numenor and the defeat of Sauron at the War of the Last Alliance. They would only have respite with the rise of the realms in exile, Arnor and Gondor. So entering the Third Age, the Northmen were greatly reduced and their alliance with the Dwarves was effectively no more, but things were on the mend now. With Gondor's victory over the Easterlings in the 6th century, the wide lands of Ravanian were now insulated from external threats by Gondor's might. By this point, the Northmen had splintered into several distinct ethnic groups. In and around Greenwood lived the Woodmen, in the Vales of Anduin lived the Bjornings, or Proto-Bjornings, as well as other men who did not possess the ability to shapeshift. Around Erebor, the Lonely Mountain, lived the ancestors of those who would become the Men of Dale and Eskaroth, and further to the south lived the most powerful group, the Men of Ravanian. It was the Men of Ravanian who would play the most important role in the first half of the Third Age. Under Gondor's protection, they grew numerous and prosperous in the lands between Greenwood, the Sea of Rune, and the River Kelduin. Although they didn't build large cities, they centralized beneath the rules of various princes, avoiding the mistakes of their ancestors. These princes seemingly contended with each other for power, but by the 13th century, one prince, a man known as Vidugavia, had risen above the rest, declaring himself to be the King of Ravanian. Vidugavia aided Prince Minokar, later Roman Dakil II, in defeating the Easterlings again and earned Gondor's favor. Under Vidugavia, Ravanian seemingly unites under one ruler, and the Northmen cement themselves into a close alliance with Gondor, even resulting in some Northmen serving in Gondor's armies and migrating into Gondor itself. This alliance wasn't well received by all Gondorians, some of whom regarded the Northmen as unconjured and inferior. The Northmen, however, would end up on the right side of history when they supported King Eldakar of half-Northmen blood himself, over Castamere the Usurper during Gondor's infamous civil war known as the Kinstrife. The Northmen continued to aid Gondor in their wars, either as allies or as soldiers in their armies. However, the Northmen could do little against their next foe, the Great Plague. Ripping through Ravanian in 1635, the Great Plague killed over half of Ravanian's population, as well as half of their horses. Although they didn't live in great cities where a sickness could easily spread, the Great Plague struck during a terrible winter and the halls of the Northmen were filled with those seeking to escape the harsh cold. Having little skill with medicine, huge numbers of the Northmen perished. Things would go from bad to worse. The Northmen would spend the next 200 years recovering, but their recovered strength was not enough to face the Wayne Riders, who invaded in 1850. At the Battle of the Plains in 1856, Gondor and Ravanian were defeated, and the Kingdom of Ravanian was subjugated by the Wayne Riders. This defeat resulted in an exodus of Ravanian's inhabitants to other lands. Some fled to Gondor, others fled across the River Kelduin to merge with the Folk of Dale, but the largest and most important group fled to the other side of Greenwood, now known as Mirkwood. There, around the Gladden Fields, they established a new homeland, and they would ultimately become known as the Aethiod. Forgive my pronunciation of that, it's a very difficult word. The Northmen who remained in the former lands of Ravanian, the kingdom that is, didn't fare as well as their brethren who fled. Although King Kalimatar of Gondor defeated the Wayne Riders in 1899, a revolt in Ravanian organized by Marwini, Lord of the Aethiod, failed and it became apparent that the old kingdom of Ravanian was, at least at that point, gone. Even with the Wayne Riders' final defeat in 1944, the region never recovered, and although Northmen still lived there, they were at the mercy of their eastern neighbours. The main power of the Northmen was now in the Vales of Anduin, the Aethiod. In 1977, three years after Angmar's defeat at the hands of Gondor, in which the Aethiod actually played a hand, the Aethiod, under their new lord Fromgar, migrated north, settling between the rivers of Langwell and Greylin. This had some unintended consequences. Their distance now increased, and then with the advent of the Watchful Peace, Gondor and the traditional Northmen allies drifted apart for centuries. In the 500 years that followed, the Aethiod grew numerous within the Vales of Anduin. Further east, the Folk of Dale, although it has to be said Dale hasn't been founded at this point, also grew numerous and prosperous. However, in other lands, the Northmen continued to toil away. In the late 25th century, a new group of Easterlings called the Balkoth 
had appeared in the lands east of the Anduin, sweeping away the remnants of the Northmen still living there. They would often raid up the banks of the Anduin, driving away those Northmen who lived to the south of the Aethiod. By 2510, the Balkoth were ready to invade Gondor, specifically the province of Kalinadon. Fearing that they were stretched too thin, Gondor called upon their ancient allies for aid. What follows next is probably the finest hour of the Northmen. Gondor's army, led by Stuart Kyrian, is trapped between the Balkoth and an army of orcs from the Misty Mountains. At the Battle of the Fields of Calibrant, an army of Aethiod, led by Earl the Young, arrives just in time to save Gondor's army, defeating the Balkoth and the Orcs. As a reward, Stuart Kyrian gifts Aeol the province of Kalinadon, provided Aeol and his descendants provide eternal friendship to Gondor. This is the birth of Rohan and the Rohirrim. But they're not the only Northmen to establish a new home. To the north, only a few decades later, the Longbeards flee the Grey Mountains and return to Erebor. Beneath the Lonely Mountain, the Northmen living there become prosperous from trade, founding the city of Dale and possibly the town of Eskaroth, or Lake Town as it is known. However, the Dale folk and the Rohirrim would still have threats to face. In 2758, the Long Winter strikes and Rohan is invaded by the Dunlendings and defeated. Although they would ultimately drive out the Dunlendings, many people perish. A mere 12 years later, Smaug descends on Erebor, driving away the Longbeards and forcing the Dale folk out of Dale. Both people survive, and although they are used to setbacks, it must have gotten pretty tiring at this point. Can't they catch a break from attempted genocide? A time of uncertainty follows for the Northmen, but 200 years later, they are at their most prosperous period since the reign of King Vidugabia of Ravanian over 1700 years earlier. With Smaug's death, Dale is rebuilt, and the new kingdom, led by Bard and his descendants, expands east and south to the rivers Kelduin and Karnan. In Rohan, the kingdom has recovered from the long winter and stands ready to assist Gondor in their wars to the south. Even in the Vales of Anduin, the Northmen and the Beornings are flourishing due to the annihilation of the Orcs of the Misty Mountains, as well as the temporary abandonment of Dol Guldor by Sauron's forces. Interestingly enough, even as Gondor reaches their weakest point, their Northmen allies are perhaps reaching their strongest point in thousands of years. The War of the Ring would see the Northmen facing more trials. Atop Amon Hen, Frodo witnesses the Vales of Anduin burning. Rohan is almost overwhelmed due to Saruman's betrayal. The Folk of Dale are defeated by the Easterlings in battle and are forced to abandon their capital city yet again. But in the end, you know how it goes. The Free Peoples are victorious, and although the Northmen do take heavy casualties, they emerge stronger than ever before. With Sauron gone, the North is safe. Rohan once again expands their territory across the River Isen, and the Dale folk are finally free of the threat from the East. Into the Fourth Age and beyond, the Northmen would continue on, fighting as faithful allies alongside Gondor on fields far from home, proving to Sauron's former servants that you don't need to be blessed by the gods to not be an asshole to your fellow men. From beginning to end, that is the story of the Northmen. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it or at least found it interesting. If you're wondering where I got my information about the early history of the Northmen, then wonder no more. You can find it in Volume 12 of History of Middle-earth, The Peoples of Middle-earth. The book is a gold mine of information that isn't necessarily found in The Lord of the Rings or The Silmarillion. The chapter I used most is called Of Dwarves and Men, so check that out if you want. Back of War in Middle Earth next week. Cheers, and remember, I don't have a useful tip for this video. Sorry.